Connor Quinlan. In this review, I'm going to be talking about what the metering system does on your digital SLR. Now, right now, I have a Nikon D300, so the metering system buttons and the functions where they're placed on the camera are going to be different than other Nikon digital SLRs, but essentially, the concept is pretty much the same. Now, the places where I'm able to control the metering system on the D300 are located right here. And as you can see, there are different types of metering you can use. First thing I want to go how over, however, is what exactly does the metering system do? Well, basically what it does is it measures the light coming into the camera and gives you the proper exposure according to the light in the situation. For example, right now, my camera is on aperture priority mode. When I adjust the f-stop, which is located right here, you can see that it's automatically changing the shutter speed as well to match the f-stop. And of course, since I'm not doing it manually, the camera has to be um, calculating the shutter speed somehow. And basically, that's what the metering system is for, Calcula calculating the shutter speed according to what f-stop I choose or whatever. When you use your camera, for instance, in complete auto mode, like a compact camera, it chooses the f-stop and the aperture for you. Well, the way it does that is through the metering system inside the camera. Of course, the metering system can sometimes be wrong. It's not always perfect. Sometimes you'll get a picture that's overexposed or a little underexposed. For example, I'll take a picture in here. As you can see right here, the picture is a little bit overexposed. So, what I can do if I'm in aperture priority mode is I can use EV, which is the button up here, and also, which I have a separate review on. I press down on that, and basically what that does is it allows me to either um, expose my picture a little more by going up or underexpose my picture a little more by going down and since my picture was overexposed I'm gonna go down a little bit to negative point three basically what that does is it means that the shutter speed is gonna decrease by one-third of a stop now when I take the picture As you can see, there is a difference in the brightness of the picture, and now it is in perfect exposure. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the three different functions of these three different settings. The first one, and what it's on right now, is called matrix metering. Basically, what that means is it's metering the entire frame. So, if I go into live view here, and you look here, the metering is going to incur all over the frame, meaning that it's going to take a reading of the entire image and basically give you the average result or the average exposure of the entire image. And that is the metering mode that I use about 99% of the time. Um, I really don't feel a need to go into any other mode because I think that the, the matrix metering does a pretty good job of metering the entire frame. And, of course, if it does overexpose or underexpose my image more than I want it to, I can always adjust the EV located up here in order to get the proper exposure. Okay, then the next mode I'm going to be talking about is the spot metering mode. And it basically does exactly what it sounds like. It meters only a spot in the entire frame. For example, in this frame here, it probably only meters an area about as large as that autofocus point right there, or maybe a little bit larger. And of course, it meters it directly in the center of the frame, so it's going to be metering according to this shelf right here. What it's basically useful for is measuring a specific um, area in the picture of metering. For instance, if you have a very white rock and you want to expose that ro rock perfectly, you would use spot metering to judge the exact shutter speed you would need to expose it correctly. But once again, since it only meters such a small area, it's definitely a mode that I never really use. Um, I don't think I've ever used um, spot metering mode where I'm taking serious pictures of landscape or anything like that, simply because um, I'd rather use the full metering range when I, where I can measure the metering or where I can meter the entire frame. The next and last one I'm going to go over is the center weighted metering. Basically what that is is a combination of matrix metering and spot metering. So it's about, since it's about in the middle of that, it's larger than spot metering but smaller than the matrix metering. The thing that makes center weighted metering different than matrix or spot metering though is that you can change the settings of how large an area you want to meter. For example, I go into the metering mode here then you got the center weighted metering area options. 
or you can either change the amount metering from 6 millimeters all the way up to 13 millimeters in the frame. Most people use 8 millimeter though. Center weighted metering can be useful, especially if you want to meter a specific area of the image. But once again, I prefer to use matrix metering. And this has been a review on how to use the metering system on your camera.